address to report on other cases too later in the programme. The island of Orkney is more isolated than almost anywhere in Britain, 45 minutes by ferry from John O'Groats off the northern tip of Scotland. It's not the sort of place you'd expect to see a major crime. And when one happened there this summer, it was a crime that would have been extraordinary anywhere. Would you like to sit down? No, what would you like to drink tonight? Okay, I think I remember who's got what. One chicken tikka. That's me. One lamb tikka. I ordered that. Very good. And uh, who's the chicken chat? Oh, that's mine, thanks. Never learn. When the gunman came in, it looked like a fancy dress. When the gun went off and I realised it, it wasn't, it was a horrible thought to have your children there and not be able to do anything about it. Shamal Mahmood was 26 and from a large and successful family. This was his second time working at the restaurant in Kirkwall, having seen the job advertised in London. We had a murder in Mum Yatas Indian restaurant. I want you to preserve the scene, Bob. Make sure nothing's disturbed. I'll get an inquiry team together and get to you as soon as possible. The Northern Constabulary covers a vast area. Orkney hadn't had a murder for 25 years and it was necessary to provide support from the mainland. A helicopter wasn't available to me, making it necessary to travel by road 150 miles from Inverness to John O'Groats. We then had to travel by ferry across the Pentland Firth. That's the nature of policing in the Highlands and Islands. So how is the Holmes computer linked to the mainland going? It's almost ready, sir. And what do we know about Mr Mahmoud Angus? We know that he's been on the island for about six weeks. He was here last year for about nine months, and what? at that time he was also working in the Mumataz restaurant. Anything more you would like? Uh, not meantime, no, not, not just uh, now. He has no enemies that we can find, uh, and we do know he has got a brother who lives in London. Uh, he was a, a very brilliant student. The family wanted him to carry on with his studies. Uh, we cannot think why it should have happened to him. He was a very kind-hearted person. The sad thing is that he got killed at a time when he was about to go home and get married to his girlfriend. We require teams to carry out inquiries at our airport and ferry terminals, to conduct house-to-house -house investigations in Kirkwall, and to re-interview all of our main witnesses. Right, Marianne, what I want you to do for me is just if you could go over the events that happened in the restaurant, just in your own words. I was showing two customers to the table, and I was just about to go back for the, up to the bar for the main use when the door opened behind me, and I turned round to see who it was. And a man with a mask on came in. At first I thought it was a choke, but then I saw the gun in his hand as he went past me. He went up to the table where Shemmel was serving the customers. And I heard a shot. I thought he was in to shoot everyone. And he, I heard the door open behind me and he came out and went down the other lane. And the last I saw him was going down the narrow lane at the back of the restaurant. We were driving down Junction Road at about quarter past seven and as we turned into the car park I saw a guy out of the window on my left. He had on dark clothes and had mossy brown hair. As you're aware, the man that went into the restaurant was wearing a hooded sweat top and he had a distinctive stoop. Down here at Junction Road Toilets, which is just down behind the restaurant, at about ten past seven, we have a sighting of a man hanging about outside the toilets shortly before the murder. Well, I was driving along Junction Road, heading towards the pier, and I was about to turn into the Albert Street car park when I noticed this chap just outside the door of the toilets on my left. He was wearing a hooded top, and I noticed he was wearing a balaclava underneath that. Also, there was someone who saw a man walking from the direction of the toilets across the road in the direction of the restaurant. George, the people of Orkney are very concerned about this murder. How can they help you with your inquiries? 
I'm keen for anyone who was in Kirkhall on the day of the murder and who may have seen anything suspicious to come forward. Can you tell me what time of day that was at? Uh, it was about ten past five and uh, I was about to go down the lane past the moment I was resting on this guy going down in front of me and he turned to stare at me, which I thought was quite frightening at the time. The way he held his arms was uh, like a bodybuilder. He was in his 20s, about 28 I would say, and his height would have been about 5 feet 8 to 6 feet. This sighting is of particular interest because of the similar physical characteristics to the person seen in and around the restaurant, but at the end of the day we still haven't established a motive for this crime. Daddy, I can't sleep. It's okay, Daddy will take you through and tuck you in. The effect it's had on our family since the incident is one of distrust. Uh, we have had difficulty going out in the evenings. Things are getting better now and we hope the kids are getting back to normal. It's difficult to take in such a horrendous event. Roger Goff, in the four months since this happened, you've obviously made extensive inquiries in the Orkneys. Now, how can a national appeal help? Well, we hope to reach the people of Orkney with a visual reconstruction through Crime Watch, uh, which may help to jog their memories. Also, of course, the programme will reach the remainder of Britain, where we hope to uh, contact anyone who has been on holiday in Orkney. Orkney and Kitwell in particular has a very uh, industrious holiday trade in the summer. Now, I know you haven't got a motive, but there was a possibility of motive in as much as the day before the murder there was a sighting of an argument going on at the restaurant, the door of the restaurant. Yeah, that's correct. About half past eight the, uh, the night before the murder, uh, witnesses described to us that two people were arguing with the now deceased Shamil Mahmood outside the restaurant in the doorway of the restaurant. Now that may have an innocent explanation but our inquiry has failed to trace these people. Now, that was Wednesday the 1st of June. If we roll back two weeks there was a, another site, and this time rather more remarkable, in, in woods which are part of the town. Describe what happened there. Well it's an area known as uh, Parkdale Woods which is uh, within the town of uh, Kirklow. Uh, our witnesses described to us that a man was carrying out uh, what appeared to be commando manoeuvres within the woods for no obvious uh, good reason. Again, that might uh, be an innocent uh, pastime, but we would like to hear from the person to have it explained. Obviously, then, we also need to find uh, any other witnesses to, to the man outside the, the public lavatories. And we should explain that while we were filming, it was raining. Actually, the day of the murder, the 2nd of June, it was one of the hottest evenings of the year. Yeah. So his uh, dress would have been most extraordinary, having a collar up, let alone a balaclava. That's correct. The weather was so good that there's no good reason for having a hood up. And the bodybuilder in the alleyway, now there's really nothing much to connect him with the crime. You really want to eliminate this man. Again, as we've seen from the reconstruction, this man is of great interest to us. And unfortunately, our inquiries to date have failed to trace him and he hasn't come forward. If he recognises himself from the programme and is prepared to come forward with an explanation, that will be very helpful.